All right, so we're starting another epoxy garage floor coating. This is a two-car garage, pretty basic, 24-24. It does have a lot of damage to it, though, so we got quite a bit of repair on this one, so this one should be pretty interesting for you. See how we repair all that damage. See, Darren's already started grinding over some of the spalling, but this one has quite a bit of spalling. There's a couple different ways we will do this today. We got a really fast setting repair mix, and then we have like a two-part uh, self-leveling kind of cement repair we might use in these darker spots because that got wet. So both of them are going to work good though. Now whenever we do an epoxy garage floor coating, we always grind the concrete first. That's our first step. We want to prep the concrete to accept the epoxy so it bonds really, really well. It just so happens, you know, this floor had a ton of spalling damage, you know, whether it was from de-icing salts or salts dripping off the car and from the winter, uh, you know, I don't know. It was just, it was just in real bad shape. Some of these were really, really deep too. That's why we're going to use a couple different types of repair material. But the ones that aren't so deep, like quarter inch or less, we're using this two-part polyurea fast setting repair material. This stuff sets really, really fast. I'll only mix like 16 ounces at a time, and then I'll dump it out of that cup as fast as I can, because if I don't, it'll set up right in the cup. So we just uh, we get that dumped out, and then we, we squeegee it around or, or just kind of drag it around with a, with a big, huge putty knife, I guess, and fill in all that spalling. And if anything, we want to leave it a tiny bit high. We don't want to get it low, because we're going to grind it smooth after, but this is basically the way we do most our spalling repairs when we do epoxy garage coating because with this type of repair material we don't have to stop and wait and come back the next day to do the you know the base coat and the flake and the top coat we can keep going because this stuff cures up so fast but because of some of these deep spalls and because of some of the water that was in here it did rain the day before and the, the people drove their cars in and the water dripped off their cars and it just kind of sat. Some of that water sat in some of these deeper holes. That's why they, would, they were wet before. So in these deeper ones right here in front of you, we're going to use um, a, a cement-based repair material, kind of like a self-leveling 6,000 PSI uh, self-leveling concrete repair. And we're going to let that sit overnight and cure up really, really good overnight before we put the base coat on it. But this is going to work really good in those repairs. Now, I'll just dump it in there and make sure I overfill them. Make sure, you know, eighth of an inch overfill. And then we'll, we'll uh, grind that off smooth the next day, which you'll see here in a second. But if there's a couple little lumps in there, it's no big deal. They're going to grind out smooth. And then... If there's any little tiny spots we miss, we can touch that up the next day with some with some fast setting two part repair stuff. But that's that's how we got all the repairs filled on this. And it did take us, you know, it took us a couple hours, probably at least two, two to three hours to get all these repairs done. But it's really prepping the floor for the epoxy coating. You guys aren't gonna believe what this is gonna look like when we're all done. It's gonna just look like a perfect floor. All right, so we're back. The next day, we got all our spalling, our bad spots patched yesterday. We let all that stuff sit overnight. So today, we grind this smooth. And if we have to touch up any of the patches, we'll touch them up, but usually we don't. And then we get right to putting the base coat down with the flake. That usually takes about an hour and a half to cure up. We can scrape it, put our top coat on, and then that'll be it. We'll be done here for today. So. I'm going to show you just how we do all that. When these repair materials cure up, fully cured, they, they cure up really, really hard. So basically all we do is just use, you know, we got a diamond cup wheel under that grinder and we'll just grind it flush with the surface of the concrete so it's like it wasn't even there. Um, that's, you know, that's how the pros do it right there. This this stuff works really good and it doesn't come off after so it's not going to lift it's not going to peel it's not going to bubble and i cover how to do all this in great detail a floor like this 
in my my uh, epoxy flake garage coating course there's a link for that down in the description below so whether you just want to do the repairs or you want to do the epoxy coating too you know I cover both and teach you how to do all this stuff in that course so check that out down the link below if you want to learn how to do this on your own learn how to do it as, as your own business you know we'll typically get eight nine ten bucks a square foot to do a floor like this so if you're looking to do this or add this to your business that would be a great course to take to learn how to do this stuff like we do sometimes a, a certain diamond cup wheel works a little better than the other that's why Luke switched diamond grinders <laughs> there this this little one seems to be working a little bit better than the other one a little bit faster that's all now what Darren doing is he's just touching up a couple little spots maybe that we missed or maybe the grinder kind of popped out a little piece for whatever reason but he's just touching them up all right just about done grinding off all the patches you can see how nice how nice that repair material works see how it fills all those all that spalling in right there nice and tight makes it good and hard so we'll be able to coat right over that so we're going to just finish up get it cleaned out vacuum get the chips all sorted out get the base coat ready to go and we'll be coating here shortly All right, so we're getting ready to go. We got our epoxy, getting that mixed up. We're doing three quarters of a gallon, which will get us about 150 square feet here. So we'll have like three batches plus a little bit. We're all cleaned up, all the patching's cleaned up. And we're ready to go. So for this garage floor, we're using an epoxy as a base coat, a two-part epoxy. And this epoxy has a built-in moisture blocker with it, so it'll help block a little bit of moisture if there is any coming up through the floor. And then for the top coat, we're going to use a polyaspartic, two-part polyaspartic top coat. And all these materials, all the repair materials, the epoxy, the polyaspartics, all this stuff is covered in the in the course, guys. So I don't, I'm not going to go into any more detail on those, but if you want to figure find out what those are, then you can check that out with that link below. And we put, you know, the epoxy goes on at a certain amount of square feet per gallon. So that's why we only mix up so much, you know, we call it a kit. We'll mix up a kit and then that goes so many square feet. And we have that measured out so we know just how far to go with that kit. That way we have the correct thickness. And then we'll, we'll get that spread out. This epoxy is actually a fast setting epoxy. We have, you can use a fast setting or you could use a slow set. We use the, we usually use the fast set because we want it to cure up in about an hour, an hour and a half. That way we can get right going on the rest of the project. Oh, look, throwing flakes, doing a job. Look how evenly he broadcasts those flakes out there. Huh? Oh, nobody could do it as well as you, Mike. That's why we give you the buckets. See, this is this is Mike right here at his best. Maybe you could put a TikTok to this one, like throwing flakes, like confetti. What's that? Isn't there a confetti song? I think it's uh, Katy Perry. Doesn't she sing a confetti? Huh? Yeah. All right, enough of Eric. <laughs> Let me know if you guys liked his narrating down in the comments, though. So we're gonna we're gonna move on and try to finish this floor up so you guys can see what this looks like. Remember how bad that spalling in that repair stuff was. It's now it's all covered up. Look at it with the with the base coat over it. You can't even see it. So that's how that's how really good and smooth those repairs come out, you know, putting them down like that. So basically we're just rolling out this epoxy, about a hundred and hundred and fifty to two hundred square feet a gallon is what we go by here. And remember, this is fast setting stuff, and it's really hot today, so, I mean, we are, we're not like hurrying, but we're moving consistently. There's no stopping once you get started. And I'm just throwing that flake out just uh, as fast as I can, trying to cover up all the base coat. We don't really want to see any of the base coat under this. Now, the colors of the flake, the homeowners pick out, and then we decide what base coat we want to put on it. 
All right, so there's the flake coat. We'll give that, that'll probably dry. Cure up in about an hour, an hour and a half. We'll be scraping it, put the top coat down, but you can see it looks like a brand new floor in there compared to what it was. So we're gonna scrape the flake. You know, this gets rid of the excess flake. It smooths it out. It just makes it for a much nicer floor. Something that they don't teach you when you, you know, buy the kit at the big box store. They, actually, they don't even sell you a top coat there. <laughs> so you can't even really compare what we do versus the stuff that they sell you there. That's why, you know, if you're gonna to try to do this yourself, you really need to learn from someone who knows what they're doing. Um, not just a store employee who's probably never put this stuff down before. So we're using, like I said, a clear two-pot polyaspartic here. And we use polyaspartic for a top coat, not epoxy. And the, re the reason we use polyaspartic is because, number one, it's, it doesn't yellow in the sun. Epoxy will yellow in the sun. Most epoxies will. They're not really UV resistant. Uh, polyaspartics won't do that. Polyspartics are much more durable than epoxy. Epoxy dry, actually dries really, really hard. And they scratch really easy. And they're much more brittle than a polyaspartic. So as far as wear and tear, a polyaspartic is going to hold up much better in a garage floor than an epoxy top coat would. And it's just real easy to apply to. The way they make these polyaspartics these days, you know, mixing them, Putting them down and applying them is, is pretty user friendly. So, I mean, with some basic knowledge, just about anybody can do it. I mean, it's I wouldn't say I wouldn't say you just don't need any knowledge. I mean, you do. You need to know some basic stuff. But you can see how I'm rolling it on there, and you need to know your coverages. You need to know how fast you got to work with it, the pot life, and all that kind of stuff. But it's it's a little different than definitely putting down paint for sure but it's not crazy difficult it's not crazy hard or nothing like that so we're going to just get these finishing touches put on then i'm going to show you what this looks like here right at the end it's uh you know from start to finish this this was a really really bad concrete floor in my opinion and now it's just like brand new again so we kind of kind of saved this one Yeah, that was a little over four gallons of top coat, 125 square feet a gallon. You can see that looks really, really nice. It's like a brand new showroom floor compared to what that looked like before. Perfect. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please come on back, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.